Okay, this is the video, the first video on Echinodermata. Um, and oh, here are our objectives for the day for the uh, for the lecture. Uh, you can use these. You can freeze the video, look at these uh, learning objectives, and use these to test whether you've absorbed the material at the end of the lecture. Okay, carrying on. Let's look at some of the local uh, echinoderms that we're going to be seeing. Okay, so um, as we go through this little uh, look, we will see at what type of animals we're dealing with with the echinodermata. All right, obviously you saw Patrick already, so we know that we're talking about starfish. And this is one of the um, local reef star, sun star, that you probably would have seen at Leisure Island if you had a dive around there. Cushion stars, which are there by the thousands in Pilot Bay, okay, by the really by the millions in the uh, more saline parts of Taronga Harbor. Here's the Cosnasterius muricata, the 11 armed starfish, which is uh, very common around mussel beds and uh, um, around by the uh, by the um, Maori warrior. Oh, what do we have here? See if you can guess what phylum that is, or not guess, but see if you remember what phylum that is. Okay, here's a brittle star, um, and that's a very common one around, uh, I think that picture was taken at uh, Pilot Bay. Here is a snapper biscuit, also very common at Pilot Bay. Okay, so sand dollar, this is a kina. And finally, a sea cucumber. Interesting little things, which are very common in the reefs around here. Again, probably uh, you may have seen that a good place to see these would be around the uh, Maori Warrior at the at Pilot Bay. And here's some extreme examples of large uh, starfish from down. Uh, from, this was on the Tongarera, taken uh, in a trawl from very very deep. Pretty amazing guys there. Okay, so what does echinodermata mean? That means spiny skin. Echino, spiny, and derm. There's that derm root of the word again. Skin, okay, or layer. So they live exclusively marine, and why they're not, why aren't they terrestrial? We'll see if you can figure that out during this video, and we'll talk about that more in class. And the adults of all echinoderms are benthic, so we don't see we see larval dispersal phases in the plankton, but other than that, we don't see any in the plankton. All the adults are benthic. Okay, so uh, general characteristics of echinoderms. They have um, pentamerous radial symmetry. So the body can be divided into two equal halves on five axes around a central point. All right, so that uh, is a quite a cumbersome definition. But if you think about slicing a pie into five pieces, then uh, equal pieces, that is radially symmetrical. But not radially symmetrical around on any line that you slice it, but just in those um, five different directions. So the five equal slices is how they are radially symmetrical. Oh, test yourself here. What phylum is this? Okay. So general characteristics of echinoderms. Um, remember it said spiny. Okay, so they've got these um, uh, hard structures which make up a skeleton and those structures are known as ossicles. Okay, calcareous just like a um, just like a seashell. Okay, and here you can see once you remove all of the soft tissue of this chalk star which is very much like a cushion star you can see what all of the small little um, um, bony plates are. Well, they're calcareous anyway, so, but they're um, the little plates, which are ossicles, uh, look like this, okay? And you can see how they're all sort of attached. And when you think about um, a starfish, is it flexible or is it immobile? And obviously, it's flexible. So in the flexible um, members of the echinodermata and the species that can um, move around uh, and bend their themselves, then 
you see these articles oops, and um, the in between area, the layer, the these things of course are not flexible because they're hardened uh, structures like a, a seashell. But in between them, there are these uh, a little connective tissue, um, uh, sort of like they're like a ligament. Okay, but they're they're like a connective tissue that allows uh, flexion um, amongst the different. Uh, amongst the the ossicles. So they these things can bend based on these connective uh tissue bits. Okay, now when you look at a kinna test, you don't see any of those that that um connective tissue in between the ossicles. And so these ones are called fused uh tests. Well the test is all of the ossicles and you can see where the spines attach on these little bumps. Okay? and these ossicles uh, are hooked together and you see this in uh, these um, kina which are the urchins and also things like the um, sand dollars okay but uh... some of the ossicles in holothoroidians which are sea cucumbers have been reduced to microscopic little um, ossicles uh, little plates that are within the leathery bag casing that is a sea cucumber. Okay, and, but these things can be used as identification uh, tools for the different sea cucumbers. Okay, you can figure out which species it is by looking at the ossicles. Uh, another characteristic of echinoderms is they all have a water vascular system. And if we think about a blood vascular system, uh, we use the blood vascular system to move blood around. Okay, we use um, the lymphatic system, which is a vascular system. A vascular system is simply a, a series of tubes, and that are connected. And the lymphatic system moves lymph around. Okay, so we actually have two vascular systems within our bodies. Now these ones have something called a water vascular system, so what would you expect that that uh, moves around the body? Well obviously it's going to be water. And it's a series of canals and also surface appendages that is used to move the organism around, but also for grasping. And this is the only phylum to possess a water vascular system. So this is one of the things that separates um, echinoderms from any other uh, animal. So let's have a look at the um, water vascular system. And here, down here, you'll see a URL for a YouTube video on, uh, um, I think it's starfish walking along, and it's got um, a great example of the water vascular system in motion. All right, so if we start with here's the this is an illustration of of the water vascular system of the very simple starfish five arms here's one two three four five okay so these five um tubes right here radiate down the arms of the starfish and this area here all of this stuff that you see is in the center okay and then if you look at this thing called a madreporite, it would be sitting on the surface of a starfish. And if we go back to the reef star, it's very easy to see where that madreporite is. Here, right here, is where a, uh, the madreporite is. And if you look at the top of any starfish, Next time you're down at the beach or wherever you run into a starfish, just look for this little thing. It will be right there on top of the the uh, central disc, which is this area here in the middle, and it will be quite obvious. All right. So um, unless you're looking at like a crown of thorn starfish or something where it would be difficult to find it. Okay. That is the mat. That is called the madreporite. And here we look at the structure of the madreporite in close up. 
here's what it would be look like on the surface of the uh, of the um, the starfish and it stands out quite well if we look at it in close up with a um, then you can see it looks a, quite a bit like a sieve or a colander all right so when you have something that's that's structured like this you can imagine that it has a function of being uh, something to uh, to allow water to move in but not larger objects and of course it you don't want if you, this thing is filled with water for larger bodies to come in and clog the system up so the madriporite is exactly that it acts like a, a strainer to stop bigger things from coming in but allow water to come in and out. Alright, here's a stone canal. So this goes down from the surface of the um, starfish and allows water to either leave or come into to fill back up uh, this um, water vascular system. And it's got a series of valves so that water can be held or this can be opened up to allow free passage. Okay, so coming down the stone canal, then there's a circular canal that allows water to move around to be available for any of the arms in the starfish. Okay, and so water can pass freely around this circular canal, or ring canal. And then there's another canal, a tube, if you will, that radiates down the arm and these ones are called radial canals so radiates down the length of the arm oh boy this is that's annoying okay and so then now that the water is able to radiate down the canal it then goes into it, these lateral canals so you, you think about your lats on the side of your body the lateral it goes off of the radial canal down into this structure which is like a balloon okay if you can imagine here's the the neck of the balloon and the opening uh, and here is what's the larger part of the balloon so just like a balloon it can be expanded or contracted and that is to allow water to be pushed down this arm or to be withdrawn up the arm. So you think of the action of a syringe, okay? When you, if this is expanded right here, then that means that water will be sucked up this tube, and then that will cause this end to suck on to whatever surface is grabbing. So if you think about a syringe, if you put it down onto something, it sucks up, and so some, this could, this little sucker can stick to things if the ampulla expands and sucks water up into the um, up this this tube and creates a vacuum so now we've got the and this is exactly how these things uh, walk around or grasp onto surfaces okay so the other features here are the Tiedemann's bodies which are um, there to um, remove foreign substances from the um, water and keep this water nice and clean that's in the water vascular system you need a way to uh, tidy the, pl the thing up and if you can imagine what um, whether the water in here bacteria are very very small they could live in here quite easily there are lots of waste products and um, other things that the uh, um, carbon dioxide and the like that the um, the starfish produces and a lot of like things like the nitrogenous waste essentially the poos and wheeze of the starfish and so there's a lot of food that's diffused around in the inner body of the the um, starfish and so these places are very very good places to grow if you're a bacteria nothing can strain you out by filter feeding uh, or um, ingesting you in on some other way. These Tiedemann's bodies though do actually strain out this water and they ingest foreign particles by phagocytosis which you'll remember from um, peripherins where a cell eats 
essentially engulfs a uh, foreign body. Okay, and finally, to if you could maintain the hydrostatic pressure within the whole thing, these there are these things called polyan vesicles, which are big reserves of water that can be expanded, and they can suck up water if um, if there's too much being squeezed out of here, or they can inject water back into the system when these things all need to uh, grip on very tightly. Okay, so that's the water vascular system of uh, all echinoderms. They all use it, and it's the only, like I said, it's the only phylum that has the water vascular system. Now I'll go onto this slide, and the next one you can freeze on these, and this gives you the um, written descriptions of all of those parts that we've just looked at. Although we're not going to spend much time on it because in this video, because uh, we'll talk about it in class. So just freeze on these if you want to um, read through these definitions. Okay, reproduction, they're mostly dioecious, which means that they have male and female uh, sexes. So how you tell apart a male and female uh, cushion star, I'm not sure, but maybe they can uh, tell each other apart. Uh, but anyway, you could probably tell them apart by look, opening them up and looking to see whether they have uh, ovaries or testes. Okay, so but they do broadcast spawn. Okay, and the there are five classes that you need to know in order to um, uh, cover all the material that you'll need for the exam. And the reason that we're we're focusing on these five classes of echinoderms are the ones that is because these are the ones that you're going to see when you're diving uh, out and about, and um, so. Uh, I want you to be able to recognize all of the uh, organisms that you're going to uh, be encountering as biologists in this area. Okay, Asteroidia, they're sea stars. Ophiuroidians are brittle stars and basket stars. Echinoderm, Echinoidia are the sea urchins, sand dollars and heart urchins. Holothuroidia are sea cucumbers. And crinoidia, are often heard or talk, referred to as just crinoids, are sea lilies and feather stars. And we will be looking at those in the follow-up videos uh, for this lecture series on echinodermata.